Everyone's favorite legendary animator, director, screenwriter, producer, aviation enjoyer, river cleaner upper, and generally relatable grandpa, Hayao Miyazaki has been making films for decades now. Throughout his time, Miyazaki's work has made a mark on both children and adults internationally. He has created many characters that are now beloved icons and his work has become a sensation across generations. But what makes Miyazaki's work so uniquely beloved? Why has Miyazaki's iconography become so recognizable across the world? Well, to put it quite simply, his characters are cute and also sometimes terrifyingly grotesque, but also so cute. Today we'll be analyzing specific characters from Miyazaki's Academy Award winning film. And the Oscar goes to, let's see. Spirited Away. In order to pinpoint just how Miyazaki utilizes images of both cuteness and disgust, as well as what purpose they ultimately serve within his films. When I say picture something cute, what do you think of? Maybe it's puppies looking at you with big and innocent eyes, or your baby nephew when he spills his Cheerios and doesn't know what to do with them next. Or maybe it's any animated animal or character in Disney films. Whatever you do associate with the word cute, you most likely do not fear. In fact, you may just want to protect it. The purpose of cuteness motivates and incentivizes what we consider within our moral circle, or what we care enough about to care about. Responses to cuteness often inform people that something is harmless and can therefore be trusted. Similarly, if something cute is hurt, we would be driven to act compassionately and with concern. Miyazaki often utilizes this response as a tool to guide his audience towards who and what they are meant to sympathize with. There are certain physical indicators, such as large eyes, a small nose, and a round face lower on the head that provokes protective behavior. We have certainly seen these details on Miyazaki's characters in previous films. They make us feel safe and loving while promoting positive responses as opposed to the closed off, dehumanized reaction often responding to something disgusting. Like for example, my mom when I smile in any family photo. What's interesting about Miyazaki is his ability to blur the lines between what's cute versus what's disgusting. He doesn't present cuteness and disgust necessarily as a duality, but more like a spectrum. The stylistic choices of his character design aren't meant to make us question exactly what we find cute or disgusting. Rather, they guide us to confront why we may react in a certain way and ultimately provide a more complex understanding to that subject's position in the grander message of the film. Let's take a look at our protagonist, Chihiro. When making Spirited Away, Miyazaki was very adamant about developing a protagonist that authentically represents an adolescent girl. From her original character designs to the final cut of Spirited Away, Chihiro's appearance consistently includes the aforementioned physical indicators of cuteness. Another indicative trait of cuteness within Miyazaki's works can be observed with just a little bit of eye contact. Many of the non-human companions pictured in Miyazaki's previous films are all drawn with a similar eye design. The eyes are much larger than most of the other characters and are typically drawn in a much more simplistic, cartoonish manner, as opposed to the features included on more complex characters. These animal characters frequently tend to play the role of the companion to our protagonists and are often a source of comedic relief. In Spirited Away, multiple characters can be seen with that same eye style, and none of these characters seem to add to the conflict of the film. Although Bo and Yubaba's bird act as antagonists to Chihiro before they are turned into animal form, once they are turned into the mouse and the fly, they become gentle companions that stick by her side throughout the journey. Another way Miyazaki bends what we perceive to be cute or disgusting is by changing the preconceived notion of insects as pests through his representation of soot sprites. The soot sprites are reminiscent of spiders, but their innate cuteness transforms them into valuable characters that provide comic relief and ultimately end up helping Chihiro and make it within her moral circle. This is a similar case with the radish spirit, who at first glance was considered a disgusting character to be avoided by Lin, but ends up being a friendly character who wants to help Chihiro. From these examples, it's clear that Miyazaki wants to change our conceptions of what cute and disgusting things signify. 
While some of Miyazaki's cuter characters have become beloved worldwide icons, Miyazaki is also known for his disturbing and gross imagery within his worlds, and Spirited Away is no exception. At the beginning of the film, we're introduced to Chihiro's parents. Off the bat, these people demonstrate that they're comfortable going places that they probably are not supposed to be. And these more arrogant traits are evident just from their features. Miyazaki has a track record of designing his father figures as skinny and gentle characters. However, Chihiro's dad is depicted in the completely opposite light. Soon after absolutely devouring a buffet of food that they did not have permission to eat, they are turned into some pretty foul looking pigs. Pigs are often used as a symbol of overconsumption and greed, and Miyazaki clearly expresses his discontent with the rapacious tendencies of post-war Japan and Western consumerist culture. The stink spirit would be another example of disgust because of the visceral reaction of the bathhouse workers who immediately fled the premises after one glance. Yobaba is also drawn in a fashion that does not highlight her features. Arguably the worst, most disgusting scene is No Face's Binge, where we see the worst of his character. What's interesting is that Miyazaki is unafraid to show these provocative images in a coming-of-age film for children. Although all of these characters are overtly repulsive, their grossness ultimately leads us to confront the true criticisms of their narratives. For instance, although everyone initially ran away in terror after the stink spirit entered the bathhouse, it is eventually revealed that its disgusting appearance was caused by pollution, and that his true form was that of a god. Expanding on this understanding, it becomes evident that the initial reaction to Chihiro's smell is due to the spirit's association between humans and the destruction of the natural world. Another aspect that disgust plays in the narrative is through a transformation, that it can be changed, like no face after he evacuates his insides. He transforms from a lost spirit chilling on the bridge to a monster to be feared into an adorable best friend. Because even if no face did some not so cool things in the bathhouse, the gluttonous monster manages to shed some pounds and eventually, after being shown a little kindness, returns to being a cute and quiet companion. I mean, look at him. He's so cute with his little smile. He's spinning that yarn. So cute. What was originally disgusting and showed some care and compassion returns to a state of balance. We get additional reassurance that these appearances actually have a more significant meaning from our initial reactions when we spend time with Yobaba's identical twin and learn that she is actually quite kind and compassionate as opposed to her crow of a sister. By the end of the film, after Chihiro completes her tumultuous journey and is able to prove her growth, her parents are returned to their human forms, ultimately stating that people are in fact capable of redemption. Miyazaki may use cuteness and disgust as a means to confront our own feelings as to what has morality and what is worth caring for, but at the end of the day, his goal is to reach the younger demographic through his depiction of characters. Spirited Away is, after all, a kid's movie about coming of age, and Miyazaki has repeatedly stressed his view that children retain a degree of innocence and potential. I believe that Miyazaki wants to influence children, like myself, that watch the film not to be afraid of something that makes you scared and want to vomit in repulsion. Through his films, he is effectively attempting to change the way we view what's within our moral circle, and by doing that with the younger generation, so as they grow up, they view that not all things that are deemed disgusting are bad and should be cast out apathetically. 